Hello and welcome back. Today we have quite possibly the most romantic pave arrangement I've ever made. This is a gorgeous, what I call Venus arrangement. And we're first starting off with the Zen port shears, trimming off any of those little dead or kind of sad looking pieces. And then I'm fluffing the entire head out because what happens is because hydrangea grows with individual umbels that all come together to form one entire flower, so to speak, sometimes those little umbels get tangled. And what you can do is by massaging all of that, taking off any dead little heads and then massaging those umbels, you can bring all of the petals, the individual petals, to the front, so to speak, so that you get a larger, more open looking flower. And then with my Victorinox florist knife, I am trimming up any of those nodes that are on the stem and then giving the end of the stem a cut at an angle for maximum water absorption. The reason it's really important to trim off nodes when you're making this style arrangement, and I'd say probably even if you were making loose style arrangements, is that with any grid that you have, those nodes are likely to get caught in whatever grid you've made, whether it's tr um, chicken wire, if it's branches, if it's other types of wire. Trimming all of those nodes off, making sure that your stems are super clean will make it super easy for you to insert the stems into the arrangement as well as take them out if you need to change their placement. So now we have stunning coxcomb celosia and I'm grouping these probably about five or six of them in each little grouping so that it creates a really nice cohesive block of color and texture. When I was processing the flowers, specifically the celosia, I took from each bunch, I think I had about three, four, five bunches, can't remember, but I took all of the pieces that were kind of like this weird, not uniform coxcomb shape, bunched those together, and then I'm making one entire grouping of those. Now we have one of my absolute favorite flowers ever, the Piketty Carnation. I use this pretty much in almost every single one of my flower arrangements because it's kind of like my signature, my secret signature. It's something that I kind of decided uh, in the uh, early 2000s, so to speak, when I was designing in Hollywood for this prolific, magnificent, gay, fabulous man. We did all the, the Hollywood parties and there was a period of time when people would request no carnations. And I thought, these people have no clue what's going on with carnations. They need to know. They are so chic, they're so long lasting, they're roughly, they're gorgeous, they're old fashioned. They are so, so, so chic. Absolute favorite flower. It has in the past five, six, seven years or so, I don't know, I really have a terrible track of time, but over the past, like I'd say five years or so, carnations really have come back in vogue, a lot more florists and people are enjoying them, especially with all of the different varieties we have available to us now. It's just like, how could you not use this flower? It is incredible, so long lasting and chic. Ooh, la, 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 la. You guys, delight reference. Where my delight peeps at? This is a gorgeous burgundy peony, and thankfully, I did get a de um, a day prior to designing this arrangement to hydrate all of those flowers. But sometimes, depending on how closed a flower is, you may need more time for them to open out. But in the case of peonies, if it's not a super tight ball, usually they will open out a little bit in a day and be ready to use the next day. And what I'm doing is just fluffing those flowers out. It's not reflexing per se because I'm not peeling the petals back. I'm just gently fluffing the flower so that it appears more open and will look more true to size in the arrangement as it fills out. 
This is why it's really important to process our flowers and make sure that we have enough time to do that because we getting, oh, hold on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Guys, okay, I forgot to say this earlier, but this entire recipe is linked below for you. Every single name of every flower, the entire recipe is in the description box, as well as all of the tools that I used to design this arrangement. Stunning, ruffled, cup shape, super fragrant spray garden rose. Say that five times fast, I don't think so, baby. But matched that ridiculous raspberry hydrangea that we have almost perfectly so cool i love when that happens because then you have these two contrasting shapes and sizes but the same exact color and i think it just creates the most satisfying texture and color palette it just it drives me insane i love it so much so really really love making a monochromatic ombre arrangement and that's what we're doing here with this what i coin the venus arrangement i call this a venus arrangement because venus mythologically and astrologically deals with romance femininity and basically feminine energy there's so much i could talk about but i'm trying to focus all the flowers here so now we have black calla lily the specific name and variety again is linked below for you and i always hold the stem up to the arrangement to see the placement of how it wants to be put into the arrangement because believe it or not flowers speak and when you are really delicate and you listen flower arranging can become a very actually quite easy thing to do because you're kind of listening to the flowers you're like oh my head is curving a little bit to the left here i'm going to then twirl that arrangement and see where in the arrangement a left bending flower will look good keeping in mind that we're grouping and we're making little bunches so stunning black calla lily and now reflexed pink floyd roses one of my absolute favorite hot pink ecuadorian conventional roses this is one of the best hot pink roses that you can get that's conventional it's not a garden rose meaning typically at the flower market you'll get conventional roses grown and sold in 25 stem bunches and garden roses typically only come in 12 and they're usually uh conventional roses are usually about half of the price or a third less than garden roses but you get double the amount so what i like to do is reflex pink floyd is a really good variety for reflexing if you guys want a little guide on reflexing roses, you can click the link up in the right here. This is, I, geez, even though it's, it's almost been a year, it's crazy. This video already seems so outdated. I've already grown so much in my editing skills. Um, I edit, cut, do all of the video work myself here and it has been such a wonderful learning process but yeah anyways if you want that how to reflex roses tutorial it's an in-depth tutorial which will show you exactly how to do that and if you have any questions feel free to leave them below because i'm happy to help that's why i'm here now we have iconic extreme ruffled rose we have the hearts rose love this this can be considered a conventional garden rose. It's so strange, depending on who's selling and growing, sometimes they can be really quite pricey and sold in 12 stem bunches, or they can come in 25 stem, stem bunches and are, you know, the price of a conventional rose. It just depends on who's growing and selling them, but really, really stunning texture in this arrangement. Oh my God. Can we just take a moment of silence <laughs> because <laughs> I'm obsessed. Unfortunately, the footage for this video got cut super short, so the tutorial is now wrapping up, but I also added in 
this stunning chocolate or dara, the name of the flower is called dara um, Queen Anne's Lace. Obsessed. I think this is my favorite arrangement ever. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that you found this video entertaining. I hope that you learned something new. And as always, subscribe, like the video if you enjoyed it, and turn on the notification bells. Do all the things, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.